All right, hi everyone. This is Jerry from Jerry's Room. Uh, I'd like to talk to you guys today about something pretty simple. Uh, we're going to be talking about exporting audio from an Ableton Live session. This is intended mainly for my clients that I have that are working or recording with Ableton or making songs with Ableton. Um, and it's uh, also probably pretty good for anybody who is an artist working with Ableton or who deals with these, uh, these artists that work with it. Um, I sometimes get sent Ableton sessions. Uh, I just sometimes ask for it even whenever it's recorded in Ableton, just say, send me the entire session. Uh, and then I export it myself from Ableton in order to mix it in, uh, my preferred mixing DAW, which is Pro Tools. Um, so uh, if you're somebody that mixes in Ableton or makes songs in Ableton and you want to print everything, you know, get a mix engineer says, just send me the raw tracks and perhaps the MIDI. How do you export audio and MIDI from Ableton? Uh, easily, correctly, um, and making sure everything syncs up whenever you just send the raw audio to a mix engineer. And also for mix engineers that want to do this for themselves. Uh, let's take a look. I've got this uh, little song set up here. This is a, a pretty simple song. It's ma mainly electronic, a lot of drum samples. Uh, but it's also got some, uh, some other interesting stuff in there, like some recorded guitar. Um, and uh, also some differences between mono and stereo, which is pretty important uh, for what we're going to be looking at uh, today as well. Um, so let's, let's just play a short bit for you there. Alrighty, so uh, let's take a quick look at what we've got here. We've got um, we've got a kick sample. We've got a whole drum track which has a bunch of hi hats and some other son sounds on there, uh, which I did on purpose for this one. Uh, we've got a pop kit. It's got a whole bunch of samples in there, uh, and we've got a bunch of synths, uh, a bass synth, uh, and a guitar loop that was just an acoustic guitar recorded pretty badly. So don't uh, judge me on that one. This, is, this was an old assignment of mine. Um, so how do you start with, uh, if you have a track like this, uh, how do you start exporting? First of all, the easy shortcut for the export window is Shift-Command-R. Fortunately, Ableton has this nice little export window that you can use here. Um, in this little window, you can select uh, specific tracks. You can select all tracks, which will just go through every single track and export it one by one for you. And you can also just print your master, which is probably the one that most people have already used. Uh, which just prints your master boss, which is basically your mix. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. Uh, first off, before we even start uh, exporting anything, say you want to export all of the tracks in your session, all at once or one by one, doesn't matter, make sure you make a selection first. You make a selection, basically make a look, what's the very final sound of your, uh, of your track, and then make some extra space after that, you know, for reverb tails, delay tails, whatever. Select there and drag on any, any track, doesn't matter which track, you could do it on this one, you could do it on this one, drag from way beyond the end of your song all the way to the very first bar uh, if this is where your song starts. Of course, if your song starts in the middle, then you just drag it to wherever your first note is. Uh, but make sure you leave this selection the way it is and don't touch it anymore for the rest of what we're about to do. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to drag it to second one, uh, I mean second zero. And uh, then I'm going to open my window up again and you'll see that this selection that I've made will be represented here. Now this is very important because if you're exporting raw audio, raw MIDI, you need to be able to uh, put all of that, just import it into a session and everything needs to sync up. If the tracks start at different times, 
or uh, they're, they're, they're not the same length, they will not sync up. And your mixing engineer will just basically email back to you and say, oh, there's something that sounds off in your song. And hopefully he'll notice that there's something wrong in your song. And he won't just start mixing it for you, send it back, send you the bill, and then, and then you'll notice that, you know, your hi-hats were off the entire time. So make sure you make the selection and don't change it for uh, the duration of exporting everything that we're about to do. Um, then you need to know which tracks are stereo and which ones are mono. Uh, Ableton has the somewhat annoying habit of basically giving you a stereo meter for everything, turning everything into stereo, even if you just recorded it with one microphone, which should basically be a mono input. It gives you a stereo meter. And uh, often I've also noticed when you go to the export audio window, it'll just leave convert to mono off. And it'll also sometimes put norm normalize on by default. First thing I would do is switch normalize off. This changes the volume or, or limits the volume of your track, changes the volume of it. You don't want to do that. Um, even if you know you have clipped audio or something like that, if you have clipped audio, you recorded it too loud and you need to record it again at a quieter volume or you know hope that your mix engineer will do his best to uh, remove any clicks or pops. Normalize won't do anything for you that your mix engineer can do better. Uh, convert to mono is a different one. Uh, you really need to go track by track on this one. For, for example, my kick here, if we take a look at this kick, uh, solo it up, you know, uh, it's, it's not a very special stereo kick or anything like that. There's no difference between left and right in the field. Uh, sorry about that little crackle there. Um, you can see the meters are just going bouncing up and down the way you'd, you'd expect them in the mono signal. You can print this track as a mono, definitely. Uh, if we were to look at this little track right here, clear differences between left and right, uh, which we would want to uh, maintain. If we wanted to print all of this as one track, you definitely want to print it as a stereo, or you're going to have you know some strange summing to mono. It's not going to sound the way you expected it to. Um, we'll talk about you know splitting up your drums later as well, which in some cases might be better than printing everything as a stereo track for your mix engineer. Uh, then there might also be uh, synths like this. Differences right there. There's a there's basically in the sampler, which is battery that I was using here, there's already some uh, difference and some panning going on. Um, in case you want to preserve that, you need to print it as a stereo. If you want to keep your panning, print it as a stereo. Of course, be mindful of the fact that uh, some sounds uh, will just be panned like this, for example, uh, this little uh, mono, mono acoustic guitar is panned to the left. And in fact, it's also pan automated. It's changing. Now, this is something I want to print mono. Why? Because the original sound is mono. And the mix engineer can probably do this panning even better than you are doing right now because he will change the stereo image or he will, he will uh, fine tune the stereo image and he will, he will do any panning automation you ask him to do, just you know, give him a chance. If you print this as a stereo file with this panning automation on it, he will have less control. He will not be able to change that panning automation. It's there, it's printed, it's unchangeable. So in this case, you could either you know, print it as a stereo and delete automation. We'll talk about automation later as well. Or you could just you know, print this track as mono. So how would I go about that? Um, if I wanted to print something as mono, I make sure convert to mono is on. Convert to mono means change to mono. So I would do this for this kick, I would do this for this guitar, and I would just export them like this. Make sure you take a good look at this. Uh, your sample rate uh, ideally um, would just be the same as what you recorded it at or what your session is at. Uh, bit depth, uh, ideally 24 or 32. 16 is a little low. Uh, might be that you left your session at 16. Might want to think about switching up to 24 and recording at 24 bit depth minimum uh, all the time. Uh, 24 bit depth, why? Because it gives you uh, 0 to 144 dB of dynamic range whereas 16-bit, uh, which is a CD, will only give you 96. So 24 will give you a bigger dynamic range, and it will also be a slightly heavier file, of course, but it will also be better for your mixing engineer to work with. Uh, and then everything else in this uh, window is pretty self 
explanatory dither options are only important if you are changing sample rates but i would leave it at triangular just to be on the safe side i've never had any problems just leaving it on triangular analysis file is only if you want to keep warp information and stuff like that i believe Alrighty, so uh let's take another look at something else you might want to take a look at some of the levels going up and down uh throughout the tracks um let me just uh unsolo this real quick you'll see that i this is already a pretty hot track some of these levels are already a little bit too high if they're higher than this you might want to consider just bringing down your faders or putting your faders to unity or even lower uh unity being zero uh when you're printing because you might want to uh give a little bit of headroom to your tracks so that the mix engineer can also incorporate that headroom play around with it a little bit uh sending really really hot square waved tracks to your uh to your mixing engineer might not be the best idea um so we were talking about automation before this as well uh try to remove automations uh such as pan and volume uh, as you can see i've got a fade out here of course this is my mix so yeah that volume automation makes sense Printing this track separately with that automation, however, will just make it harder for the mix engineer to determine which compression to use uh, and will give him less control over the volume of the track because it will go up and down without him doing anything. So try to remove that. The easiest way to, uh, to do that would be to delete your automation. Now, if you're nervous about destroying your original mix, first of all, make sure you save uh, live set as. And for example, the song is named Star Star Stars. Uh, you could name it Star Star Stars for export. And you save it as a different project file. This way, if I did it like that, I could just go around deleting automation like that. It'll be gone. Um, you can always command Z to bring it back, but just on the safe side, delete it before you export it um, and save it as a different uh, Star Star Stars export, whatever. Uh, so you don't lose your original mix. Also a good idea to send your original mix to uh, to the uh, mastering or mixing engineer. So if you want to print uh, if you want to print your master first, uh, make sure that's not converted to mono. Uh, you can send that to uh, your mix engineer before you start exporting your tracks. That way he knows what you were trying to do, and he will sort of um, use the same idea for his, for his mix of your song. Uh, but when you're printing these separate tracks, delete these automations so that you can then safely export these at the volume that they are at, uh, at a unity volume, and then leave everything like that up to the mix engineer. Same with panning automation on stereo tracks. Um, you might you might have really intended for a, a part of that uh, sound to be on the left. If that's so, your mix engineer will hear this in your reference mix, or you can just remind him of it in an easy email. Uh, but please give him a, a normal centered mono or stereo track um, that he can work with, right? Uh, other things that might be important. You have, I have this reverb and this delay set up here on these buses. That's fine. I can even print those, as you can see when you do Shift Command R, I can even print those separately, just the pure wet signals. Uh, in case I want to, in case it's like an effect that I really want the mix engineer to use or to use as a reference. Uh, but there is also some, uh, there are also some reverbs going on um, and some EQs and compression going on um, on some of these tracks. Now, sometimes this is a little bit of a gray area. Um, sometimes you can say, this is really, I really shaped this sound exactly the way it is and I want it to stay that way and just have the mix engineer not change that. So you could, for example, leave this EQ on, but this reverb, for example, um, you if you print it with a reverb on it, it'll make it much harder for the mixing engineer to EQ because he'll be EQing your dry signal and your reverb signal at the same time. Just switching this off when you print it will fix that little problem there. Um, I've also got a little micro shift going on here. In this case, I might leave this on because it's part of the sound that I made. Uh, or I might print him one with, one without, and leave the mixer, up, leave the decision up to the mixer what he wants to do with it. So I'm going to uh, pause here for a sec. Uh, 
take a look at part two for how to deal with exporting MIDI from Ableton and how to split up your drum tracks into uh, separate audio channels, also useful when sending it to a mixer. Uh, so visit jerrysroom.com or subscribe to this channel and uh, you should be able to find part two linked underneath in the description. Thanks a lot guys and see you guys later.